What's going on guys, it's Jaren from Wetters.com here with a performance review on the Peak Speed Eagle. Huge shout out to the good folks over at Peak Canada for sending these over our way. We really appreciate it. Let's just get straight into it. Here's a look at the traction pattern on the Speed Eagle and it performs very well on clean courts. It will cover you during all movements, no problems whatsoever. With that being said, the outsole is a little pliable so outdoor use isn't recommended. This will grind down on outdoor surfaces and won't last very long. Back to indoor every once in a while you might have to wipe but it's too far in between to become a nuisance. Overall this traction is starting 5 traction, it covers you in all directions, wipes are minimal and even though they're not that durable this doesn't affect the performance whatsoever. Onto the cushion you can see that the Speed Eagle uses Cushion 3 technology from Peak. If you haven't used Cushion 3 before it's definitely more on the plush side but that doesn't mean it isn't responsive at all. You're still gonna get the good court feel and responsiveness those quick guards like but if you're a big man and need impact protection, Cushion 3 offers that as well. Also, the way the midsole is cut right here in the heel provides really good impact protection and compression for those hard landings most commonly found during rebounds or large leaps. In a nutshell, Cushion 3 is a revolutionary at all. But if you play in these for long periods of time, your feet aren't going to hurt. It gives you the baseline protection and responsiveness needed to perform at a high level. I'm going to have to give this a six man badge. It gets the job done but doesn't take an extra step into being a starting five cushion setup. Most of the materials used on the Speed Eagle is this synthetic overlay that features a mesh underlay. You also have some panel leather panels on the heel and forefoot for more structural support and durability. The synthetic overlay is a rubbery type material that's very pliable and not constricting and that mesh underlay is extremely breathable. This cage like structure up here with the rubber overlays allows the Speed Eagle to give you support and structure without being constricting and uncomfortable. As for the panel leather panel on the toe box, this provides durability from those toe drags and on the heel that pan leather panel gives you more heel lockdown and support. All in all, I'm going to have to give the materials on the Speed Eagle a 6 man. They're okay, they do their job, they don't do anything revolutionary, but they also don't hold you back any. I really like the middle section of the materials, they're very comfortable, but I still believe that they could have found more lightweight alternatives to these patent leather panels that still offer good durability, which is what they give you currently. So I'm having a hard time figuring out if they offer half sizes of this model or not. I've seen nine and a half floating around, but I haven't really seen any other half sizes. So with that being said, I had to go up half a size and this was the right choice. I would not recommend going down half a size. With all that being said, the fit was still pretty good considering I was wearing a size 11 and not my natural 10 and a half. The midfoot lockdown was really good, but the forefoot featured some dead space that allowed my foot to slide into the toe box during hard stops and cuts. With my foot sliding into the front enough times, the insole actually started to crunch up in the very front of the shoe which made for a really uncomfortable feeling. All you have to do is take off your shoe and pull back the insole but in the heat of a game that's not really an option. While your first instinct may be well they gotta fix the forefoot lockdown, not necessarily. Even more support in the ankle and heel area will prevent your foot from sliding. It'll keep your foot locked in so that you don't have the problem that I had. With that being said though the ankle and the heel were sufficient enough to give me what I need as far as heel lockdown. With all that being said I'm still giving the fit a a six man rating because that is the only issue and if you don't even wear half sizes this might not be an issue at all. As I mentioned in the material section the Speed Eagle uses this cage frame like structure to provide support without sacrificing breathability. The overall support was sufficient enough to let me do what I want to do without feeling in danger of rolling my ankle or whatnot. A TPU shank called foothold gives you arch support while a heel counter gives you that heel lockdown and stability. Again, the Speed Eagle doesn't do anything crazy or revolutionary. But the most important thing is that it doesn't distract or hurt you, which means you can just focus on playing basketball. 
I much rather have a shoe that does the baseline things that it needs to do and not go over the top with risk of hurting me or being such a unique setup that my foot can't fit into the shoe properly or support it properly. The Speed Eagle is that shoe that anybody, no matter what your foot shape is, you can step into and it's not gonna hurt you and it's gonna give you the protection that you need to perform. So as I play in more Peak models, I'm starting to understand what they're all about. Peak's Cushion 3 setup is fit for every position, one through five, and the overall support is comfortable and doesn't restrict or hurt your foot. And the traction holds up perfect indoors, but outdoors they might not last too long. Again, the fit is a little sloppy, but this might only be a problem for people with half size feet. If you wear an even size, the fit might be great, but that four foot lockdown needs to be refined and I believe adding more support in the ankle and heel area can remedy that. With all that being said, the Speed Eagle still gives you the necessary attributes you need to perform and protect your foot on the basketball floor. Anyways guys, I hope I give you some insight on what Peak really is and specifically this model. And also let me know if you still have questions about Peak or this model in the comment section. Until next time guys, see you in the next one. Peace.